Come on, I know I can get the... Oh, there we go. Hello. Um, Long time no see. I had a, an issue with the... Well, anyway, it, it doesn't matter now. Hi, YouTube. Hi. I realize you haven't seen me for a while. That's because I've been on LiveJournal a lot more and on YouTube a hell of a lot less. Um, it doesn't mean I love you any less. It's just, you know, sometimes people move on and they get new, new hobbies and that's okay. And it doesn't mean that, you know, that we can't be friends. Anyway, one of my live journal friends, blah, 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 blah. one of my live journal friends actually made a video and I was like, <laughs> videos, that's a thing I could do. And so here I am actually filming a video response to her. I'm going to be talking about Doctor Who. If you haven't seen Doctor Who or if you haven't caught up with Christmas special, which will come up in this video, don't watch it. It's going to be filled with spoilers. I don't want to spoil anyone. It's just Pinky swear, if you if you haven't seen Doctor Who, don't watch this. Even if you've missed me, I'm gonna try and make more YouTube videos. So just okay, okay. So my friend Angie, who who made these videos, she has a problem with trolls and the hate and wank that goes on in fandom, and she wanted to make a defense of season five. I'm going to be literally responding to her, so you can watch her, f it's a two-part video, it's 20 minutes, 10 minutes each. You can watch the first part here and the next part here. I'm hoping that this works, and if not, I'll have links in the sidebar, it's not a sidebar, in the doobly-doo, is that what we call it now? Anyway, pause this video and, and watch hers first, because A, I love her, she's a really good person, and she makes a lot of interesting points, and I am going to be discussing them with you, so if you knew what I was talking about, why I'm responding the way I am, it's good for everyone. So seriously, pause this and go watch those. I'll wait. Have you watched it? There will be a quiz. There won't be a quiz. Okay, here's the thing. No matter where you are, what you're doing, or no matter what fandom you're in, you're going to find haters, and you're going to find people who don't agree with what you think. This is just how life works. We are going to have to get over this. My point with making this video response is to encourage the idea that we can have positive, thoughtful interaction between fans who don't agree, because the rhetoric has been very negative for years across the board. Calling Harry Hermione Shippers delusional springs to mind. Are they? You can't say that. That's not fair. I'm getting to a point where I'm trying to be much more democratic in how I think of the things that I love, and I want to encourage thoughtful, respectful discourse, because you're, even with people with whom you feel identically, you are bound to disagree on something. Kaylee ships Ten and Martha, for Christ's sake. But the point is that we can talk about Ten and Martha and Rose respectfully. I've never once had a bad conversation with Kaylee about Doctor Who, because we both respect each other's boundaries, and there's a lot about what you agree, which is the fact that both Ten, Martha, and Rose are all awesome people. We just interpret them differently, and that's perfectly okay. Angie posted a, a defense of season five, and I am going to post a critique of it, or at least a critique of Stephen Moffat in general. A. The only things that I'm putting forth in this video are my personal views about Doctor Who and Doctor Who canon and, and Doctor Who themes. You might not agree with me. That's fine. I'm not saying that mine is the only way to look at it. I'm not saying that mine is the right way to look at it. It's just how I see things. If you don't agree with me on something, that's cool. I'm not I am absolutely not going to attack you for what you believe, and I hope that you won't attack me for what I believe. That brings me to point number two. If I see negative comments in my comment box thingy that got away from me, you'll be banned, I will delete you. This is about positive discourse. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And nice includes constructive criticism. I'm going to be highly critical in this video, and that does that comes from a place of love, and everything that you say needs to come from a place of love and a place of respect. And I'm hoping that this will open the doors to less miscommunication, because a lot of the issues that Angie assumed people had with season five I don't have, and my issues are actually very different. All right, um, Angie's first point was about whether or not you can be a fan if you've seen something, just a little bit of it, or if you've only seen, you know, the new stuff or the old stuff or whatever. I agree with all of her on that, so I'm just going to move on completely because A plus, Angie, good work. Eleven's not the real doctor, then who the fuck is? I love Matt Smith. I adore him. I love everything about him. The thing that is so astonishing about Matt's performance is that he can really capture the age and the alienness of the Doctor. He's 
a 28 year old guy who wasn't an actor at first, he was a footballer first and he discovered acting and oh my god, Matt Smith. He has such range and such depth and such width and such breadth and I sound like a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> this, is, this is what my love for Matt does to me. The thing is, as much as I love Eleven, Matt Smith is not my doctor. When you say to me, oh my god, I love the doctor, I'm going to imagine David Tennant. That may not always be true, but right now it is. And the thing is, it makes it hard to treat Matt fairly. We talk about I love Eleven as opposed to I love the doctor. Matt's doctor is very positive and he's very accessible. 9 and 10, for better or worse, are Rose's doctors. I can't really call them mine because he's 9 and, and 10 are defined by having Rose and then and 10 later by losing Rose. And this is also true of losing Gallifrey, this is true of losing the Master, this is true of losing Donna. 10 is defined by loss and losing what he loves. And so you have a lot of angst and pathos there and it's hard to get rid of that and it's hard to get beyond that. And a lot of that comes from a very human place of missing and wanting and grieving. And it makes it hard to believe in the Doctor as this intergalactic Santa Claus who comes in and saves the day, which is very much the view that Stephen Moffat is pushing. The thing that is really defines Eleven is how open he is and how trusting he is. He's very much a dad, kind of. And that's very different from what we've seen before in the Doctor Who reboot. That doesn't make Stephen Wright and Russell wrong, or vice versa. It's just two very different ways of telling the same story. <sighs> Alright, point number two, and this is kind of the biggie, um, whether or not Stephen Moffat is a sexist. Uh, Angie said that she'd never really seen all of the interviews and stuff where he said questionable things and she uh, judged his writing purely on what is actually presented in episodes of Doctor Who. For the record, I'm going to read you some things that Stephen Moffat has said just to so you have an idea of context and why sometimes his writing makes me uncomfortable. This is going to be a very brief section because I don't want to focus on negativity, but it's something that I think needs to be said. Now, most of this comes from uh, an article that was written in 2004. So this was when he, Stephen was still writing The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances. I, can, I will link you to the article that I'm reading from in the doobly-doo, but this is uh, what he had to say about romance in Doctor Who. Yes, there will be sex in the disinterred Doctor Who, or at least a hint of it. There always was, he says, and the interviewer says, really? Quote, Patrick Troughton had a pretty girl and boy assistants, both in skirts. Russell is quite keen on an element of sexiness, and anyway, all TV now is cast with this question high up on the list. Do we want to go to bed with these characters? But that will never be the central element of Doctor Who. The show is about saving the universe. You can't be thinking about the lovey-dovey stuff when there's that level of jeopardy involved. <sighs> Point number one. Stephen Moffat cannot separate sex and love. There's a difference between do I want to go to bed with this character and all of that lovey-dovey stuff, and he just kind of lumps them, and I don't think they should be lumped. Quote, I don't know how well women came out in coupling, says Stephen, and coupling is kind of his answer to friends, and it was his show that he wrote before he came on to Doctor Who. This, there's this issue you're not allowed to discuss, that women are needy. Men can go for longer, more happily, without women. That's the truth. We don't, as little boys, play at being married. We try to avoid it for as long as possible. Meanwhile, women are out there hunting for husbands. Point number two, women only want to get married, men only want to avoid getting married. That's all that we are, and that is our gender binary. First of all, I don't really believe in a gender binary, but... <sighs> and then he has this to say about marriage. Quote, well, the world is vastly counted in favor of men at every level, except if you live in a civilized country and you're sort of educated in middle class, because then you're almost certainly junior in your relationship and in a state of permanent crippled apology. Your preferences are routinely mocked. It's a huge, unfortunate lack of respect for anything male. Point number three. Oh my god, I'm Stephen Moffat. My life is so hard. My male privilege is showing. and My wife doesn't respect me and she makes fun of the fact that I like cars and like... Oh my god. Now, do I have to think that you're a good person to appreciate your art? No. Orson Scott Card is the most awful, disgusting, raging homophobe in the history of the universe, and I still read and enjoy Ender's Game. 
Do I like Ernest Hemingway on any level? No. But I can still appreciate what he did for the American novel and uh, the ripple effect that he's had on literature since his time. I can think that you're a terrible person and still love what you do. And I, in a lot of ways, I love what Stephen Moffat does. However, I can't really forget about the fact that he's said these things when I'm watching Doctor Who. And I wish that I could, because I think I would enjoy it a lot more. But that's where we stand on Stephen Moffat.